Hey everyone, Victor is here and today we are going to look at a couple of very interesting reactions. The cyclopropanation and the Simmons-Smith reactions. And while the cyclopropanation of alkenes via carbenes and the Simmons-Smith reactions are not quite the same thing, they both accomplish the same goal. They both convert alkenes into corresponding cyclopropanes. This is sort of a niche reaction, but it does often show up on the test and it's definitely a must know for any organic chemistry student. So let's make sure you are armed with everything you need to know about these two reactions before you go to your test. So grab a cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the example problems with me, hit the like button for luck on the test. And let's get started. Let's start by looking at the Simmons-Smith reaction. This reaction uses the diiodomethane and zinc copper alloy to make a carbinoid species that looks like this. You don't need to know how exactly that happens, so just remember that the zinc atom will insert itself between carbon and iodine and will form a new reactive species. This reaction can be done with pure zinc too, although it is very sensitive towards the zinc surface quality and we often use ultrasound to help this reaction get going. Next, we are going to react this new carbinoid species with an alkene. This reaction has a concerted mechanism, which will make two new bonds between the CH2 of the carbinoid and each atom of the alkene species, giving me a cyclopropane product right away and zinc iodide as our or inorganic co-product, which we don't really care about, so I'm not even going to show it in the future examples. So from the stereochemical perspective, this reaction is stereospecific and can be classified as a syn addition, which kind of makes sense as you can only add CH2 group to the molecule to make a three-membered ring from, well, just one side of the molecule. Which means that if I look at this example, for instance, I get these two products, which are diastereomers of each other. So here are a few examples. In the first case, I'm going to be adding a three-membered ring across my double bond right here, this double bond, giving me a product that looks like this. Notice that this product is not chiral, so I'm not going to be making any stereoisomers in this case. The next product, however, is a little trickier and I can make my cyclopropane ring look at me or away from me like this, which in this case is going to make a pair of enantiomers. And finally, my last example makes a spirocyclic molecule like this. This molecule is not chiral either, so we're not going to expect any stereoisomers in this case either. Cool, well, that's pretty straightforward. Now, when it comes to the other cyclopropanation reaction, well, it doesn't really have any fancy names. And as the name suggests, we are going to begin with making a carbene somehow. Now, there are many different ways how we can make carbenes in organic chemistry. And funny enough, my career as a chemist started with the chemistry of carbenes, so this topic is kind of near and dear to my heart. Within the scope of a typical sophomore organic chemistry, though, we are going to limit ourselves to making our carbenes from chloroform by treating it with sodium or potassium third butoxide. And the first step in this reaction will be a simple acid-base proton transfer, simple acid-base reaction, in which the third butoxide pulls off the proton from chloroform, making an anionic species looking like this. Next, the chloroform anion that I have just formed is going to lose a chloride anion, giving me a carbene. Well, now, carbene is a rather exotic species. It is a neutral six-electron carbon species that is at the same time a nucleophile because it has an electron pair sitting on it and it is also an electrophile because of the empty p orbital that it has. Truly jack of all trades, chemically speaking. And so when this species is in the presence of an alkene, it can at the same time take electrons from the alkene because it is, well, an electrophile 
and it can also give electrons to it because it is a nucleophile which is going to form a new cyclopropane ring like that. This cyclopropane has a couple of chlorine atoms sitting on it, so those might come in handy later on when we decide to do more chemistry with our product, depending on what you want to do with that, of course. So let's check out these few examples here. In the first example, I'm going to be adding cyclopropane across my double bond right over here, giving me a product that's going to look like this. Now, this is a chiral molecule, so I'll have two possible enantiomers as my product. My chiral arbon in this molecule is right over here, so I'm going to show my chirality by highlighting my implicit hydrogen like this for this particular enantiomer, and by putting this hydrogen on the wedge for the other enantiomer. Now, in the next example, I will be making this double bond into a cyclopropane ring, giving me a product that looks like this. And this is a mese compound, so I am not going to expect any stereoisomers in this case. And also here is the plane of symmetry in case you miss that one. And finally, for my last example here, I'm going to be making a fun looking spiral molecule like this, which is not chiral either. So no stereoisomers of any sort in this case either. Well, now you know what to expect from the cyclopropanation reaction and the Simon Smith reaction on the test, so you are full armed and you you can go and show them. So, as a quick recap, the Simon Smith reaction uses zinc and diiodomethane to make simple cyclopropane ring from alkenes via zinc containing carbonoid species, while a regular cyclopropanation makes three membered rings via carbene intermediate and results in a cyclopropane with two geminal chlorine atoms on it. Both reactions have a concerted mechanism when it comes to the addition to the alkene, and both reactions are stereospecific, giving you the same in addition products. Thank you for watching. If you've learned something new today, give this video a like, drop your questions in the comments below, and I'll see you tomorrow.